Hey guys, what's up? So before we get into today's video, we are going to start by cooking something up. We're going to be using HelloFresh, of course, as always. I'm super excited to be cooking HelloFresh today. Y'all know that I've been rocking with HelloFresh for a while now, and HelloFresh never ever lets me down. Their recipes are so delicious they currently just dropped something new which includes mediterranean recipes that are filled with fresh fruits veggies nuts olive oils and fiber packed whole grains for that nourishing balance i literally never get bored with their options i just feel like they have an amazing 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 variety of options like they have amazing options when it comes to choosing food i'm somebody that's very picky and i'm somebody that gets very bored of eating the same thing over and over again and that's one of the many things that i love about HelloFresh is that i have so many options and i'm truly never bored I'm never bored and neither are my taste buds. HelloFresh chefs really know how to diversify your dinner menu with seasonal spring recipes like sweet heat shrimp tempura bowls, garden shrimp ricotta ravioli, one pot creamy lemon dill chicken soup. They literally have it all. You literally can treat yourself. I love the HelloFresh effortlessly saves time, money, and stress. I literally don't have the time to come up with different meals, with different recipes every day. I have so much going on at home. And now with two kids, it's just a lot. So I can always rely on HelloFresh to just help me out and take that stress away. With HelloFresh, you have step-by-step -step recipes that are super easy to follow. I promise you, you cannot mess up. And their pre-portioned ingredients, which helps us cut out prep time so that I have way more time outside the spring and summer with my girls. If you were interested in trying out HelloFresh, make sure you go to HelloFresh.com and use my code JaylenBuys16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. So go on and head to HelloFresh.com. Use my code JaylenBuys16 because y'all know I hooked y'all up for 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. <laughs> two weeks left um you are so big and so heavy you are huge you're ripping mommy up i didn't want you to come before christmas or on christmas i was like bring in the new year with a new chapter a new life a new baby so if you can hold on until january i don't even mind going until december 31st Hold on, we're almost there. We're almost there. My water broke. How do you feel, babe? Good. Hi. How do you feel? Excited. I knew I should have ate before I came here. This is the plan. I am going to be, hopefully, trying for my V back. What do you want to say to Joe Byron right now? <laughs> Get this baby out of me. <laughs> How do you feel? Like a million bucks. I look cute. Or I look like crap. Almost time. Oh. My baby. So who owed me spring? Mm -hmm. oh. Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new video. So I feel like I look so weird because I just did my eyelashes. So they look like super, 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 super full right now. But I don't know if it's because like I got used to not having that many lashes on my face um, because I needed to feel so bad. These are on um, A-list like little baskets. So I really don't have anywhere right now. I feel like to record. I was gonna record on my dining room table but um i have company over and they are watching um a movie so i didn't want to get copyrighted or anything so i was like uh, i'm probably gonna go to the other room um i want to tell you guys i am losing my edges y'all oh my god it's good it's good it's getting real crazy out here i'm not gonna lie to you so i am finally going to be doing ayla's labor labor and delivery vlog it's been a while my daughter is three months hold up this is how crazy life gets especially now that i am a mom of two 
um ayla is now about to be five months literally in like a few days that just goes to show you how much time i have for myself um after having my second baby i filmed this almost two months ago and y'all are now seeing this but I had to update you guys. I didn't want those who are new to the channel thinking that she's three months. She's actually about to be five now. She just was three months when I recorded it. <laughs> and I haven't found the right time, I feel like, to do this. I feel like there's a lot going, oh my god, my battery is going to die. Why does this always happen to me? Welcome to my birth story vlog. Okay, so I know that this has taken me some time and honestly, first and foremost, I want to say um, it has been a wonderful three months. <laughs> Five. <laughs> yes, so these three months have been very crazy. Like I've been, I learned how to be like a mom of two um, and how to like juggle two girls, two girls who have very strong personalities while still being a girlfriend and still be kind to myself because there's a lot of mistakes that I made while I had Aubrey that I didn't want to make again this time around. Um, but I am finally ready to tell you guys my birth story. I was hoping that I would not have a Christmas baby. I know everybody wanted me to have a Christmas baby. But I did not want a Christmas baby whatsoever. I did not want a Christmas baby. I was like, no. I wanted my daughter to have like her own special day. I didn't want her to share it like with the holidays and stuff like that. It's just I was not into it. Um, so I was like praying like, no, Dreamy, don't be a Christmas baby. Please stay in there, stay in there, stay in there. So she wasn't a Christmas baby, thank God. Now let me tell you guys what happened a few days before Christmas. She loves to like make so much noise. I did not want her to be born on Christmas. I was like, no, 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 no. So what I will say happened was, so going back, when I became pregnant with Ayla, I knew firsthand I wanted to go in with the VBAC. I did not want a C-section. And when I went to like my very first, like my first two appointments, um, one doctor basically had to change the doctor because they didn't see patients past 10 weeks, which is crazy to me. The second doctor, I had to switch him because although he was cool and all, he was not trying to let me try for a VBAC. Like, I went in and I was like maybe like 11 weeks and he was already talking about like, okay, so let's schedule your C-section. And I'm like, what? Like, can I try? Can you let my body even try? Like, I want to try for a VBAC. And a lot of doctors don't want you to try for a VBAC. Um, I can make that video separately maybe. Um, but basically, I'll tell you guys shortly, really quickly. Um, I was very, 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 very persistent with not wanting a, a C-section. And I was letting people know my birth plan because it's my birth plan. It's my baby. It's my pregnancy. And it's my body, most importantly. So, um yeah so i ended up changing him because he wasn't with it and his hospital didn't do it so i found a hospital and a doctor that is vbac supportive um that they support that and um i was talking to my obg boy and like you know we're on a vbac we were both on the same page as a vbac for whatever reason i got an automated message well it was an automatic phone call um and the girl was basically saying like hey i'm here to call you to schedule your c-section and i'm like I'm like, you better relax, girl. Ayla's three months, three and a half months, and she literally be rolling over and stuff. Like, I have her on her little boppy pillow. But why are you trying to be grown, girl? Guys, I'm gonna have like a 50 million hairstyles. So, um, I got a phone call, and they're like, hi, Jalen, we're here to call you because we are here to schedule your C-section. And I'm like, schedule your C-section? I'm not with scheduling anything like what are you talking about you know me and my doctor spoke about um having a VBAC or whatever and they basically had scheduled me for my c-section january 10th and i was like no like i don't want to have a c-section or whatever and then i basically i remember like i had it on speaker and me and you were laying down in bed and i like turned around and i looked at him and i just like started sobbing like i was 
hysterically crying and he was like why are you crying and i was like you know like they're not even giving me a chance and i just felt like they were robbing me from my experience and i just felt like i was so close so he was like don't worry this is a little bit before january either a little bit before december 25th or it was literally like the 27th that they called me um you know that weird timeline when it's like right before christmas or like or a little bit right after christmas and um, i remember feeling stressed out i was crying i was like hyperventilating and everything and he was like don't worry babe like we're gonna have this baby naturally like you're gonna get to push her out blah 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 he was very supportive and i think it's very important to have a supportive partner um or just have your partner be on your same type of time you know like because when there was times that i felt like i wanted to give up or whatever like d never let me give up um and was just extremely extremely supportive so he was like you know you're gonna push her out you're gonna have your v back you're gonna have that vaginal birth that you really really want and a lot of people ask me why i wanted that rather than just having a c-section and honestly like a c-section recovery it's very very brutal um you know they're literally cutting through seven layers of skin and muscle and all of that and then you know they're taking out this baby and it's a very traumatic um type of surgery um your your recovery is way longer than it is vaginally which i'll tell you guys about that as i tell you guys more of my birth story um like you know you're still on certain medicine you don't have to be if you're very good with pain but um i thought i was superman and superwoman i was like lifting chairs and redecorating my room when i had my c-section and like you know you have to be careful you can reopen your stitches your incision hurts if you move a lot if you laugh if you chuckle like just going from like this to like this you don't notice how much you use your core until they cut it in half basically and where they cut you um I just feel like if I can avoid a surgery, why wouldn't I? Um, so that's why. Like, this is what my body was meant to do. I want my body to do what it's meant to do. You know what I mean? Um, if if it's that my body, if my body tells me, no, Jalen, you cannot push out a kid and you do, and your baby needs you to have surgery, then okay, you know what I mean? But I'm not gonna let a doctor tell me no before my body tells me no. So I was very firm on that and I was sticking to it. So I personally um, know from experience that when ways to help you kind of go into labor is to do the, you do the nasty and it helped with Aubrey and it helped with Ayla. And I remember telling you like, I'm so big and I'm so uncomfortable, but we gotta, we gotta, cons we gotta consistently do this. Like, it's time to get the show on the road. And, um, so I honestly was so uncomfortable. And I know that when you're that big, it's like hard to even move, pee, walk. Like, it's very, very difficult to do anything. I feel like in your very last few days or your last few weeks, um, at this point I was missing like what, like a week. Um, I had Ayla at 39 weeks. So I was like, I'm over this. So, um, December, I want to say I started to get like a little bit of contractions here and there after Christmas, December 20, December 29th, December 29th, December 30th. I actually went to the ER because I was starting to get contractions. Okay. So it's, what is the 30th, right? The 30th. And it's 824 AM. I think I'm in labor. It's been happening since like 4 a.m. Oh I don't even have words for this type of fucking pain. I don't have words. I don't have words. and we were stuck in traffic i literally just woke up and i was like i, I try to like sleep through them but mm -mm. my biggest fear is just like that we get there and they send me back home but i'd rather be safe than sorry anyways but they're they're about two minutes apart in my contraction so let's see what they tell us i'm about to drop off um Aubrey and then we're gonna see what they say and I was like this is so 
so weird. So me and D had, you know, did the dirty and I actually started contracting right away. Right away. I'm talking about, I even think that mid of us having intercourse, I started cramping, like cramping as in having contractions. And it was so painful for me towards the end. And literally, like, I kid you not, 20, 30 minutes later, my contractions started. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Because I had forgotten what contractions even feel like. You know, I haven't had a kid since four, it's been four years. So he's like, sure, you want to go to the hospital? Do you want to go to the hospital? I'm like, no, I'm scared. Like, I don't really want to go. And then they sent me home. So, you know, I don't want to look like a punk. So he ends up saying, like, you know what? Fuck it, let's go. So we end up going. This man is going crazy, driving like crazy. He's driving on, you know, the corner on the side of the highway that you're not supposed to freaking drive on. I don't know what it's called right now, but he was driving on that the entire way because there was traffic. It was like 7 a.m. traffic. Um, we were there for a little bit. We were in the hospital for a little bit. They were checking me out, monitoring me. They were like that. I definitely was having contractions, but I, that I was in the early stages of labor. Um, and, you know, this can take like one to two days. It could take a few hours. It just really depends on your body. So basically, long story short, kind of, sort of, kind of a false alarm. And they sent me back home. Um, but we already knew it was coming. I knew that my body was already starting the process. So I want to say this was like december 29th december 30th like december 29th december 30th i'm already starting to contract so new year's eve um i wanted to take it really easy because remember i was still in pain so new year's eve i think this was like the 30th actually new year's eve december 31st i woke up and i still was having my contractions so i this is why i was like in labor for a few days but i was home early stages of labor and i was home and i'm like oh my god like oh my god and i told d like i want to just have a super chill super calm new year's eve i don't want to go anywhere like i want to see the ball drop at the house in bed like we can order out we can order chinese food just have a super lazy weekend we can bring in the new year and super peaceful super calm just us and i felt really bad because aubrey wanted to party and stuff so i had my parents pick her up and she went to my parents house at my family's house they had like a party and she was there with them having fun with her cousins my dad my mom my sisters um and so it was just me and Dee at home and we were binge watching power oh my gosh so in the last few days of the year of the of the year 2021 i was binge watching power because i had stopped watching power like early on and i was like i want to watch it again so we i started re-watching the entire show and up until like i basically had ayla so we were binge watching power and we're eating chinese food i felt like it's for me it's the little things in life and honestly that was everything for me like it was just me and him super calm like we were barely on our phones um we were just like enjoying our last few moments together um before we brought in ayla and um even with aubrey because remember aubrey left the very last minute um and so yeah so I was, I remember when the ball dropped, I was in so much pain. I was in so much pain. And I was literally just holding on to his arm like, oh my God. But it was, it was inconsistent. It was coming and it was going. So I'm like, it's not consistent enough for me to go to the hospital. That man was ready to take me. Oh, hold on. Go back. I actually, two days prior, I did the water, like two, three days prior to all of this. I did the, my water broke prank on him. And he was super excited. I'll put a small clip right here. Your water broke? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. Touch my pants. Are you serious? Your water broke? Touch my pants. What? Oh. You're lying. Shit. Give me lying. I swear to God, I just did. Holy shit. What? Serious? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. What are we doing? What are we doing? 
Wait. Are you serious? I'm sick. Wait. Yeah. Wait. Maybe I should call my doctor. Who are you calling? He's right here. Oh, he's there. He just touched my pants and everything. Come on, let's go. Oh, shit. Look, Tim, look. Oh, shit. Tim is here. Come on, yo. Where are we going? I don't even know. Wait, where's Aubrey going to go? She can come to my house. Okay, wait, wait. You're an asshole. Um, <laughs> what is he doing? What is he doing? What is he doing? He just, he just, guys, he just got the car from the front. Look, he's running, he's running. He's running. He got the baby bag and everything. Watch, I'm gonna catch him, I'm gonna catch him. Babe, it's a prank. You fucking serious? <laughs> She said it was a prank, yo, bro. <laughs> yo, bro. Yo, bro. I had to do it before I gave you serious? her. Um, and he was basically like, "Stop playing! Like, you know, what if your water was to really break? My water didn't break with Aubrey, by the way. I had a very slow leak. Um, so by the time I went in with Aubrey, it was the same thing. I went in one time, and they sent me home, and then I had like a slow leak at home. And then when I went back in, they're like, "You have no fluid. What happened?" And I'm like, what? And that's kind of why I needed an emergency C-section. Um, her heart rate was just fluctuating and I didn't have any fluids, so they had to get her out. Um, so I was scared that this was gonna happen again and I wanted to prevent having a C-section, you know? So I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Um, I prayed a lot my whole pregnancy, like, please let me have this baby, happy, healthy baby. Let me have her vaginally. Um, so I'm very conscious, you know, if I'm leaking or anything. I noticed that I started to have like some sort of wetness and I remember I wasn't like wetting my panties completely but there was some type of water there very little and I'm like mm, what is going on so I remember that night I slept with the towel in between my legs um and I was just so uncomfortable I kept waking up every like 30 minutes and he was like are you okay and I'm like no I'm miserable um he was very very attentive and just like making she was very on point and making sure that everything was good um we slept in very late that day actually because i didn't sleep at all and i i woke up at i want to say like 1 2 p.m that day and we have blackout curtains so it's hard for us to tell like what time it is like whether it's still nighttime or still daytime so i remember that day we woke up around like 1 2 p.m and he woke up and he was like hey Today, it was now New Year's Day. It's New Year's Day. It is January 1st, 2022. And he's like, I want a New Year's baby. And I'm like, no, I do not want a New Year's baby. I didn't want a Christmas baby. I don't want a New Year's baby. Like, everything is closed on New Year's. He really wanted, like, the ball to drop and Ayla be born, like, on New Year's Day. And I'm like, no, I don't want that. I want her to have her own day. And I have always said, like, I want my daughter to be born January 2nd, 2022, because my favorite numbers are 222, angel numbers, spirit numbers. 222 is my shit. Um... And what's crazy is that in my notes, I was like pre-writing my caption for when I gave birth because I did this with Aubrey. So I was like, oh, let me do the same thing for Ayla. Um, and I actually wrote, I sometime back in October, I'll put it here somewhere. I wrote like her little paragraph and then I just made an imaginary date. Um, and I wrote January 2nd, 2022. And I was, and it's so crazy because like I literally manifested that. I just wrote any random date. I was like, hmm, what date? Because I didn't want a December baby. Like I wanted a Capricorn baby and I wanted her to be born in the year 2022. Like I wanted to start the year completely fresh. Like 2021 was a pretty stressful, crazy year for me. Um, A lot happened in 2021. And it was like... I, I couldn't even grasp everything that happened to me. I couldn't even grasp everything that happened to me. It was like I just needed to go into this new year with a new blessing and a new look at life and a new chapter and a new everything. I just needed everything to be new. Um, so I didn't want to have her in 2021. So, which is why I wrote January tw January 2nd, 2022. I thought that that was such a beautiful birthday. And um, I manifested it. Girl, manifestation queen. So... We go to the hospital. Okay, no, sorry. 
So D wakes up and he's getting ready. He's like, okay, hey, listen, I'm about to go get a haircut. I want to have like a nice clean shave from when my daughter is born. Like I want to make sure that when she meets me, I look good. And I had actually did my hair. I'll put a clip here. I did my hair in the middle of the night. I did my hair like around two in the morning. I was super bored and I was like, I'm going to do my hair. Um, because obviously the salon was closed and stuff because it was New Year's. And I was like, I'm going to go to the salon and... I'm, I mean, I'm going to do my own hair. I'm going to attempt to do my own hair. And I swear, that is the one and only time I've ever done my hair so nice. Hi, guys. Welcome to my fake little vlog. Shut up, bro. I'm doing my own hair because I'm pretty bored and there's nothing to do. It's New Year's Eve. I mean, now it's New Year's. It's my first time trying to do my own hair, but I figured it would be easy to do, being that my hair is now short. And I have like layers because I have like side bangs. So that's why y'all see like different um cuts. But I have been having contractions all day on and off. They're not consistent, so it's fucking blowing mine. Like, I would love to just be in active labor right now in the hospital. It's like 1 a.m. I get them like every 15 minutes, which is trash. I need them to be every 15 seconds. So, I don't know. Maybe she's going to listen to her mom because I really want her to come on the second because I just think that they is mad cute like one two 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 but she's already being so fucking stubborn shocker they never listen they say oh they say you know your first baby is supposed to be the quickest and the fastest i'm here to say that's not true don't let people tell you that Cause it's not true seems like she's never gonna come i mean one way or another she gotta come but if it's up to her she ain't coming i even tried to do my hair after that just like that and i cannot do it for whatever reason my hair came out so beautiful because like god knew that i was gonna meet my daughter so um i did my hair so he was like i want to make sure i look good for my daughter too so I'm gonna go get a hair. I'm gonna go get a face shave and a haircut. Um, he was like, he literally came to the bed, he kissed my belly, and was like, Ayla, dreamy, listen, dreamy, you listen to me, dreamy baby. Do not do anything stupid before your daddy is here. Like, make sure don't don't do anything while daddy is not here. Wait for daddy to come back, okay? I will never forget that. He's like, don't don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything crazy. Don't act up. Wait until daddy comes back home. I don't know why he said that. So, I, I literally, it's like he jinxed it. So, I was like, I laughed. And he was like, I'm going to come back. And then we'll go out to dinner later on tonight. Like, we'll go to Capitol Grill. Just me and you. We'll have a nice fancy dinner. And like, you know, we'll just wait for the baby to come. And I was like, okay, I was super excited. Girl, I was about to have some lobster, baked mac and cheese, some filet. Oh, my God. Some steak. And some mashed potatoes. Oh, my God. The mashed potatoes are so good. Some, like, asparagus. I was, like, drooling, thinking about the food that I was going to eat. And um, I'm like, okay, super excited. And he goes. And then I FaceTime my girl, Tasha. So Tasha is, I don't want to call her my best friend. Um, but I do feel like she's somewhere near there. I call her my sister. She's like my big sister. Um, I love that girl to death. Like, there isn't anything I wouldn't do for her. Like, she has proved herself to me so many times. Like, ugh, love her. Love her to death. Tasha is like my down bitch like that is my girl so she's always been too i've known her for years like i'm talking about i went to middle school we were in the same middle school together she's just older than me um so anyways 
I called Sasha and I'm letting her know everything that's happening. She was like, hey, I'm letting her know, like, I'm feeling a little bit weird. You know, I'm scared that I'm having a slow leak. I don't want to freak out D, though. So, you know what we're going to do? She's like, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Let's um get ready. Get ready. Let's go to our favorite Spanish restaurant. And then let's go to the hospital. And the reason why I was hungry. So, the reason why she was like, let's go to the Spanish restaurant first was so that I can eat and go to the hospital on a full stomach. Because, you know, whenever you... Um, go to the hospital and you're admitted, you cannot eat again until basically until you give birth. I'm about to get some like bone broth or something because I knew I should have ate before I came here. So I'm gonna give you guys a hospital update. Um uh, no food haul. <laughs> I got ice chips but it's holding on to the phone. I got cranberry juice because I can only be on liquid. I got ginger ale. <laughs> he ordered everything I could have on the menu. He got me two ices, cherry, and lemon. Um, and then I got broth. So this is chicken broth, and I wish it was beef. I like chicken, but. I just feel like beef has more flavor, huh? You think so? You don't think so? No, I think chicken is more flavor. Yeah. I'm starving. I originally wanted to eat, but he was like, you're about to have a baby. No. You see guys get to eat. Back in the days, you couldn't even, all you could have was ice chips. That's it, nothing, nothing else. It has no salt. They need some salt in the bag. It needs like adobo. <laughs> so we wanted to just make sure that I was nice and full. So I'm like, okay, I literally had made myself a cup of coffee and I was eating crackers on the side. And I was like, okay, let me just finish a little bit of my coffee and then, you know, we'll go, I'll get ready and whatever. And as I was drinking the coffee, I remember I was like, oh, ow, 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 ow. and I had like two contractions and she timed them for me. She was like, we have to make sure we're timing them. And she timed them for me and they were like two minutes apart. And she's like, Jay, they're two minutes apart. And I'm like, I know. And then I remember I had been suffering all night. So this was like normal for me. And then I was like, I'll call you back. I'm going to go take a shower. And she was like, babe, I think you should stay on the phone with me. Like, just stay on the phone with me just in case. Like, that way, if anything, I'm there and I'm hearing or whatever. Um, Stay on the phone with me. Go take, take a shower with me on the phone. So I'm like, all right, you sure? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. I walk to the bathroom. I literally turn on. I literally go like this. And I turn on my light, and right there, like, I'm like, Tasha, Tasha, I'm peeing on myself, I'm peeing on myself. And right there, like, I, I, I went like this, like, to try to hold it. I don't know why. Like, that's the first time ever that I experienced, like, my water breaking. Um, And I, I instantly try to, like, hold my vagina. Like, I don't know what I thought I was doing. And it just came trickling down my legs and everywhere. And I obviously couldn't stop it. Like, you know how you can control your pee from coming out? I couldn't control this liquid. And... I was like, Tasha, I peed on myself. I, my water broke. She's like, oh my God. And I was like, oh my God, my water broke. And I was like, what do I do? And she was like, call Derek. And I was like, okay. And I literally looked at the floor like, yo, my water really broke. Like, I always wanted to experience that. Like, I, I feel like I got to experience everything I wanted to experience with this birth. And I was like, oh my God, my water broke. And I called the dean. And he was like, what? And... And I was like, yeah, yeah, but it's okay. Don't worry because just because your water broke doesn't mean that the baby is coming out right away. Like, you have time. You know, you have time. And I'm like, did you get your hair cut? He's like, no, I literally just got here. Like, literally, it took him like 15 minutes to get to where he was going. And in, in that time, my water broke. He's like, I literally just got here. And all I heard was a car go like, Aah! like, I heard that. And he was coming back home. He's like, I'll be there in eight minutes. And I was like, but I know where he was going or whatever. It would take him like a nice 25 minute. It was like a 25 minute drive. And he was like. Like the 15 to 25 minute drive. I kid you not. 
that man got here in eight minutes and when he was coming he was like running and jumping and hopping and skipping and, and just all over the place and i'm like i'm literally like this oh let me put this in. let me put this in the bag i think i do i need this i think i need this in the bag let me put that in the bag what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? Like I was super calm because I know that one, I'm feeling the pain. So I know that my contractions are not super like, like I know that the baby's not coming out. Um, girl, I even took a shower and everything. I proceeded to take a shower and he was like, what are you doing? He walked into me naked. I was completely naked. I had just gotten out the shower. Um, and when my water broke, I got in the shower and then, you know, by the time he came out, I had gotten out. He was like, what are you doing? Why are you naked? Why are you not dressed? And I'm like, I wanted to take a shower. I wanted to be fresh and clean. Like, what do you mean? He's like, put on clothes. Throw on anything. And I'm like, I want to look cute. Like, you know, like, what the hell? And I was doing my hair. I made sure that I got the claw clips. I made sure I was repacking. Make sure I had everything in there. I was looking for my slippers because I didn't want to wear Crocs. Like, I mean, I was looking for my Crocs and my slippers. And I was looking for my Crocs. And I actually... And that's why I wanted to record the video today because I wore the same outfit I wore when I went into labor. I was wearing my pink sweatsuit, which is from Fashionova. Okay, guys, so it is New Year's Day. I was suffering last night all throughout New Year's Eve. And my water broke as I was about to go take a shower. So let's see what they tell us when we get there. driving like a maniac he thinks he's in fast and furious like i'm like is this really my water my mom is like yes it's your water your water is all over the floor like what else could it be so let's see and i'm like oh i should wear pink and my nails were short oh my god and i have pink nails again but i have pink french i had actual completely short pink nails they were all pink um and damn i stick to the same habits for the most part when it comes to like my nails and stuff but so i was like all pinked out and um I don't have my ring on. Hold up, I need my ring. This was my um Christmas gift. My ring. I put it on my middle finger because a bitch ain't married, you know. So this girl, she's so strong, lifting her head up. I go. He's like, J Jay, you're doing too much. Come on, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. And I'm like, bro, the baby is not about to. I, like, I'm not about to give birth right here. Relax. I grabbed everything, her documents, her folders, her everything, my hospital bag, his stuff. And I'm like, I didn't grab his stuff. That's what we hadn't forgot. So my placenta stuff, because, excuse me, I was going to be encapsulating my placenta. So we left. Um, remember that I had pranked him? So we were ready already because I had pranked him. So he had everything ready. Um, and we go to the car and this man is driving like a maniac. She might be a New Year's baby. It's the all pink for me. <laughs> it's the all pink for me, girl. Oh my god. He was like, which hospital do you want to go to? So we went to a hospital downtown. And he's like, do we have enough time to go to the hospital downtown? And I was like, yes, babe. I'm not about to give birth right here. Like, we have time. And he's like, okay. And he's still driving like a maniac. And he's like, I don't care if a police stops me. I'm going to say my wife is in labor. Or like, what they're going to say? And I'm like, dude. And then it was also raining outside. So he's super, like, he's holding on to me. Like, he's holding on to, like, Jesus Christ. Like, he's holding on to me. Like, I'm his prized possession and I cannot fall. And I'm like, dude, I'm fine. Um, He didn't even let me put my Crocs on, girl. I, have, I was looking for my other Crocs. He said, don't put the Crocs. Put your house slippers on. And I'm like, house slippers outside, though? It's raining. He said, put your house slippers on. We're leaving right now because I will drag. I will take you barefoot i would drag you outside don't play with me so 
he was taking this whole labor thing very serious if i say so myself so we drive downtown we park the car in the parking lot and then we're walking he's like can you walk and i'm like yes i can walk and it's actually better for me to walk so we walked a little bit to the hospital we check in blah 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 they asked me what happened i told them my water broke so now they come in and they check me so they admit me they check me i was only still i was still only one one and a half centimeters but because my water broke they had no choice but to admit me so when they admitted me they were just you know the doctor spoke to me about my birth plan again my actual doctor my ob was not there but that was okay i was fine with that um and we he was like okay let me talk to the other doctors really quickly about what they think about my plan and then we'll go forward from there so they come back and basically the plan was my water definitely did break and the rest of my water broke as i was laying down there on the bed and they checked me um so basically their plan was they were going to induce me which a lot of the time most hospitals they do not like to induce women um that are having a VBAC or women that are getting a C-section just because it makes um, the the chances of something going wrong, whatever, it goes up by like a little bit. So basically, what they're most scared of when you're having a VBAC is a uterine rupture. So they're scared that your uter your uterus is gonna like it's gonna so your incision that it'll like burst um, and it'll rip open. So that that is a 0.8% chance and they treat it like if it's a 99% chance. So um it was a 0.8% chance and with them inducing me it would bring it up to like 1.9%. Um so they read me all of this, they explained everything to me. They said we're going to induce you that way we are able to control your labor. Um and they also said that they were going to be putting in an early epidural and I wasn't mad at it because I knew that eventually I was going to opt out for an epidural. I have nothing against epidurals. I very much want epidural. Give me all the drugs. Give me the drugs. Any and every drug. I am not about to do this raw. Hell no. Absolutely not. Give me all the drugs. So they were like, you know, the reason why we want to give you an early epidural is so that um, if anything goes wrong and we have to wheel you in to have an emergency C-section, the epidural is already in your back. You're the reason why I don't do YouTube videos. Because you want me all to yourself. Right? That's what you want. <laughs> um, they were like, you know, in case you have to be wheeled off to surgery, <clears throat> we don't have to put you under. Because if we put you under and then the risk, the risk, the risk, I don't never know how to say that. The risk, they jump by like a lot. They jump by a lot if they have to put me under. Like they don't know basically about wake up or whatever technically you're supposed to give birth within 24 hours of breaking your water and that didn't really happen for me so then i became like at risk for an infection or something like that so um it's now january 2nd and i'm like dude like i don't think this baby is coming anytime soon and um you know they'd have me on and off of pitocin because it was like ayla liked it she didn't like it they had it super high then they took it off and i'm just like oh my god like god please don't let me have a freaking c-section so now i'm basically like two days in labor because remember like i was in labor at home i i got sent to the hospital got sent back home to labor at home and then i was in labor all day new year's eve and then i went to the hospital new year's day and it's now I went New Year's, my water broke New Year's Day at 4 p.m. Got to the hospital like, what, 5, 6? And it's now the second, 24 hours later. So let's say it's now the second, like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. And they're like, okay, you're like 6 centimeters dilated. So I'm like, oh my God, like, what the, I'm like 7 centimeters dilated. I'm like, what the hell, this baby's not going to come out. And then I'm like, oh my God, I really want her to come out today. Like, you know, one, I was tired already. And two, like, I wanted her to be born on that day so they kept checking me and then um i started to get a fever so my fever uh, went up to 100 102 or like 101.2 and you know that's when stuff starts to get a little tricky like they're trying to make sure that ayla stays happy because they're really 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 trying to avoid a c-section so they have me sitting like all the way up they have me doing all these different positions you know so that ayla is happy and they don't have to rush me over to a c-section and um it, at this point it was hard for me to sleep because i was super uncomfortable and now i'm at epidural once i get to like 
eight centimeters they kind of turned off my epidural so i can no longer receive any more epidural um so i'm at one point the doctor came in and it was like so weird so basically like when i was having a contraction i would dilate to like nine if you really you have to dilate to like almost 10 i think it is so i was like dilating and they're like okay they're like mm, they couldn't really tell so when i was contracting i would dilate to the nine or 9 10 whatever it was and then like when i wasn't contracting it was like a seven they were so confused they were like what the hell is happening so they called another doctor and this doctor she did not play she was very like and it was kind of like call me when shit is happening like call me when it's going down because like it was like given like i'm not gonna waste my time on this petty shit so but i liked her because she was straightforward and she was honest so she they called her and she came in and she checked me and she was like i'm gonna have to like strip you because it's like you're almost there but like you're not fully there yet and i want this baby to come out so she basically oh by the way i had in the catheter inside of me obviously and i had um because they couldn't get my temperature fully like they did a rectal temperature and obviously they were doing the one under my mouth it was just all it was go a lot going on and they was trying to really get Ar um, aubrey ala's harpy i always mix up their names they basically put something else inside of me that was like um for us to like really monitor ala's heart beat it was like it was like another tube inside my vagina like i had two tubes inside my vagina i had the the catheter and i had something else in there and girl she literally went in there and just went like this. Just went like this. Oh my god. When I tell you I have never been in so much pain in my life. When she did that I wanted to fucking kill myself. I wanted to die. She literally just went like. And I was like. Oh. After I felt all of that. I started crying from how much pain I was in. Um, and Epidore is not wearing off. So I'm like, oh my god. And like I'm telling D like press the button. And he's like, babe, it's not letting me. Like, it's not letting me. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's not letting me. He's like, what happened? Are you in pain? And I was like, yes, I'm in pain. Stop talking to me now. So this is when I start to get mean at him. And he's kind of like, him and his mom are looking at each other like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think I feel? Are you dumb? Like I was I started to get a little mean at that point because it was right after she did that to me and then um whatever so then they come in again it's still super cool super chill they come back in my is my pain is getting a little more intense they come in they check me and they're just like okay you're ready and I'm like huh what I'm ready they're like yeah come on we're gonna get ready we're, we can start pushing now let's do practice pushes and I'm like whoa whoa, 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 whoa. what do you mean I'm ready like I thought I was gonna be screaming like I gotta pull and like i was like laying down like kind of like dozing off they're like no come we're gonna start we're gonna start you're there you're ready and i'm like holy shit like holy shit i'm about to push and i remember they were changing my nurses like because you know i was there for like already a day and a half so the nurse when she would leave she was like listen like i really have faith in you like i really think that you can do this like i know you can have your feedback the only thing that i'm scared of if i'm 100 percent honest with you like because i asked her like do you think that i can do this and she was like the only thing i will tell you that i'm worried about is that when it's time for you to push i'm scared that you're gonna be too tired because i had been in labor for so long and i now had a fever um which means i had some type of infection going on and that's just because like i had no fluid um i had broke water 24 hours i still hadn't given birth to ayla and on top of that you have to keep in mind that like every single time like you're open and you're dilated and every time they go in and they check you they're introducing like bacteria and stuff in there so she's like i'm just scared you're gonna be too tired to push because you've been in labor for so long so you know your body's exhausted i know you're exhausted so i did not sleep or anything and then i started to push you know and i asked them like i have a question for you guys so how long does a mom normally push for and they're like oh you know like three hours i said uh-huh me i'm not pushing for three hours are you i'm not pushing for three hours like i don't have it in me to push for three hours i said it at that moment if i have to push for three hours i'll just ask for respectfully c-section me because i cannot push for three hours after I, I just did not have it in me i swear i was exhausted in every way shape and form i was exhausted i could feel my feet and i could like wiggle it and stuff um so i had one nurse hold me on this side 
I had the doctor in front of me and then I had D like right here and then I had his mom holding my other leg. So it was like his mom, D, nurse, doctor. And um and I also had the mirror there so that I can see. So you know like I'm getting ready to push. Look at me in position and shit. I'm an actress. So I'm getting ready to push and stuff and you know they're teaching me how to push and as I'm pushing I had to basically push her down because it's not like she was fully crowned yet so we were doing that for a little bit and then I was like honestly I'm not pushing for three hours and I looked at the time I was like okay so I have a few hours before it's midnight come on Jay and um as soon as they told me that I was gonna start pushing his mom started bawling and I'm like and then I look at the and Dee's crying and I'm like, babe, why are you crying? I, I only did one push. Like, I only did one push. What are you crying for? And he's sobbing over here. And I'm like, babe, why are you crying? And his mom is sobbing too. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then started pushing, started pushing, started pushing. Um, And then, you know, they're going good. And then all of a sudden I see that Ayla has hair. So I see her hair in the mirror and I'm like, babe, she has hair. And uh, because when we did the ultrasound, when we did the ultrasound at 28, 29 weeks, I had asked them, like, does she have hair and stuff like that? Because they were able to tell me with Aubrey even before I was that big. And they told me that Aubrey was going to have a little bit of hair. And she did have a little bit of hair. Um, but they told me that Ayla had absolutely no hair at 29 weeks. That she was most likely going to come all bald and everything, whatever. Girl, she came out with mad hair. And, like, as I'm pushing, I'm seeing mad hair coming out my vagina. And I'm like, oh, my God. God, because I I've never had a baby with hair. Aubrey had a mohawk, like a little light mohawk, and Aubrey hair is Aubrey's hair is light on top of that, so it didn't look like a lot. Um, and I'm like, oh my god, babe, she got hair! And he's like, yeah, she does have hair. I asked them how long I was pushing for, and they told me I was pushing for like 45 minutes, almost an hour. And I was like, oh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like I was ready to let me sit up because that hurts my butt bone. That moment, I was ready to give up i was ready i remember i looked at d i just looked at him and like we looked at each other in the eyes and i was and i saw he saw how tired i was and i just put my head back and i was like i can't do this like i can't do it anymore like i don't i didn't have it in me to push anymore and he was like no like come on like you can do it, babe. You can do it. Then he's like, I'll buy you whatever you want. You want to go shopping after this? You want me to buy you a new? I'll buy you whatever diamonds. I'll buy you whatever bag. Whatever you want. I'll buy you a car. Whatever you want me to buy you. I got you after this. I'm going to get you another push gift. You want another push gift? I got you another push gift. Come on, mamas. You got this. You could do this. Look at me. Look at me. You can do this. You got this. You're there. You're almost there, mamas. Come on. And I'm like, oh my God. And then he was like, come on. You can do it. You can do it. And then right there, I'm like, okay fuck fuck it and then right there i closed my eye so i'm so annoyed that i closed my eyes because like but i was that exhausted i closed my eyes and i pushed super hard i pushed super super hard every time i felt like you when you have a contraction obviously the head comes out and then i feel like it kind of goes in a little bit like you know it, like let's say this is the vagina i feel like the head will kind of come out and then like it'll kind of like you know go in a little bit but there was this one time when i pushed Ayla's head was like this and when the contraction left her head stood there and I was like <sighs> after he told me that and I did that big push she was like almost out and I was like <gasps> and she stood there her head like it looked like this like this because I could see her head like just like this it wasn't like out like this but it was like this I felt like I was shitting her out i felt like she was coming out of my butthole it did not feel like she was coming out of my vagina it felt like she was coming out my butthole and i was like i remember saying ow 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 i was screaming i was like ow 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 take her out take her out help me i was like help me help me help me help me because i know that at that point when they're like that out they can help you like they can like rip you a little bit or they like can put their hand in there and pull them out and at that point like it just felt like she was ripping me like my butthole my vagina everything like i felt like i was shitting her out and right there they're like oh shit they put on their stuff and they right there they were like okay now do many many pushes and i looked at the like bro i can't anymore and he's like come on come on and then right there i did like the they make you do these like weird pushes where you're like ha, 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 like that like 
really small and i closed my eyes and she was out like and all i felt was like her go like this and she was out and i saw all her hair and i was like oh my god and bloop, they put her on top of me and when they put her on top of me i'm like like she wasn't crying and i'm like why isn't she crying and and the nurse is like you know they're cleaning her or whatever and they're like yeah and they're like oh she it's just such a, it's just a transitional period give her time give her time and i'm like the transitional period like what do you mean give her time they're like give her time give her time give her some time and now it's like a few seconds you know everything feels long in this moment and it's a few seconds and she's still not crying and i'm like she's, she's not crying and i and i looked down at her and they all looked at her and she was actually like getting purple like she was losing color and then right there and then like as as soon as they're on me they're already starting to get ready to stitch me up because she did rip me i think they had to give me like two stitches i had a, a second degree tear um i think they had to give me like two three stitches and three stitches and all of a sudden at that moment they all look at each other and they're like okay we need to take her right now and they put her in the the little you know the thing where they put the babies when you give birth to them except that this time it was all the it was a really big room and she was basically on my right side but all the way like at the end of the room and the room was so big so i couldn't really really see unless i'm like breaking my neck to see her um and I'm exhausted, you know, and now they're trying to, they're taking on the placenta and now they're like, the placenta and now they're like stitching me up. So on top of that, the guy that's stitching me up, it was his first time, I think, stitching. He's delivered a lot of babies, but he's never stitched. So the the other doctor that I said she was very stern, she's looking at him. She's like, no, you got to go deeper. You're not doing it right. So and every time he's doing it, I'm like, ah, 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 ah like that. Because I could low-key feel it, but I can't feel it. Like, I could feel it, but I can't feel it. So it was like, the drugs were like there, but it wasn't there. So she was like, okay, stop. And she was like, listen, I know you're a little bit in pain. Because the anesthesiologist is going to come. He's going to give you something on your hand or whatever. That way you can not feel that. Um, and then I'm going to take off the, I'm going to remove the stitches. And I'm going to restitch you. And I'm like, no. And she's like, listen, I'm a woman. And I'm going to tell you, you want this to be done right. You want somebody to stitch you correctly. You don't want somebody to stitch you incorrectly or whatever. Basically, he wasn't doing it deep enough or whatever the hell. She just knew that it wasn't being done correctly. She was going to do it herself personally. So he came in the end of the, the, I don't know why I struggle. Ever since I've gotten like braces and my retainers in my mouth, I cannot say certain words. So the anesthesiologist comes in and he, fun fact, that's what I wanted to do in my career, whatever. So the anesthesiologist came and he did that and it was like instant and then she went in and boop, boop, she went ahead and stitched me up and at that moment all of a sudden i see a like 10 doctors swarm inside the room and that's when i knew that something had happened because i'm like why there's so many doctors in here but it's so much going on like i'm here with the fever like so tired um the doctors are restitching me like i'm feeling some of it and i instantly told d like follow ayla like forget about me i have like three four doctors on me follow ayla so they he went to ayla and i looked at him and i'm like babe babe and he was like kind of pale and i've never seen him that pale and not scared before and he was like he had tears in his eyes like he was crying and i'm like what the fuck is happening um when she came out he was crying already like so happy and he kissed me a few times and i was like oh, okay but everything feels so fast like you know like his mom was like you did it you did it and he was crying everybody was crying i didn't cry right away because i'm a weirdo like that i don't i didn't cry when i had aubrey even though it was c-section and i didn't cry for some reason when i had ayla and then um i was very happy with both though and then so basically long story short ayla was not breathing and she did have the cord wrap around her neck and she just wasn't breathing so when they came in i know they poked her a few times they told me they poked her a few times um to get a vein they couldn't get the vein and then they put the tube in her they put the tube down her throat twice the first time it didn't work the second time was when they finally got her to breathe and then like you know she was breathing and then she cried but literally like i had recorded like we were on the phone and um they recorded like the labor like a voice call voice memo and you, you hear me saying like why isn't she crying it wasn't even a, it wasn't even like i pushed and she started crying it wasn't like that it was like a while until she cried and because we were so worried that something was going on and something was going wrong we stopped recording or like my mother-in-law had stopped recording um 
and yeah she stopped crying i mean she started crying she was fine she was getting poked and she was not crying and her eyes are she was just like <coughs> ayla has big eyes like d when he was a baby had huge eyes d and his mother they have huge eyes because d actually looks like his mom and resembles a lot of his mom he has a lot of his mom um and they have like these big eyes and ayla was born with these big eyes looking and the first thing i said was like who does she look like and they both were like d and i was like bro and yeah i carried her and i breastfed her right away the only thing was that because i had um a fever and an infection um they had to take her to the transitional nursery and watch her for 48 hours or at least for the first 24 hours i was a little sad about that because she wasn't able to stay in the room with us they let her stay in the room with me while they took like her weight and all those little things all those extra things but for the most part she couldn't stay with me in the room room when i was upstairs what i loved about it was like and this is how i know i didn't have like a strong epidural towards the end because literally like 45 50 minutes later i got up and i went to go pee in the bathroom like i got up and i walked to pee like I, you could never with the c-section like hell no like you know i was walking and shit 50 minutes an hour later and then you know they changed us we went upstairs and um i think d had followed ayla wherever it was that she went i don't really remember too much this part but d went and followed i told him like go with her so he followed her whatever and i went upstairs with my mother-in-law so my mother-in-law like oh my god shout out to my mother-in-law because this is what actually made us super 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 close and she cried to me and told me like i look at you so different now like our bond is so much deeper and real and just like she appreciates me a million times now like our bond is like next level i remember like i was like kind of struggling to like clean myself at that moment because i wanted to clean myself right away and um she was like you know like let me help you and i'm like no it's okay and she's like let me help you like she was there like cleaning me like she was in there like stuff that a mother should do for her actual daughter is what my mother-in-law was doing for me and you know you are embarrassed because like you're bleeding it's blood it's nasty it's messy you know and she was doing all these things for me she was helping me because it did hurt i was stitched up i was super swollen um and you know she was like helping me with the peri bottle i believe it's called like she was helping me in there she wasn't like actually touching it but she was like helping me spray it in there correctly and stuff and she was dabbing it and stuff she was super just like not grossed out whatsoever and it actually touched me because it's like wow like you're really taking care of me like if i'm your own like if i came out with you and i was very grateful for her and for even her being there the whole experience of me giving birth the whole labor experience up until like you know giving birth it was very chill it was very zen vibes like i was not stressed out i wasn't you know it was very cool calm and collected um because that was the atmosphere and the environment that we had created and um i really really appreciated that and then um you know d went ahead and d went outside and got us food where's the mozzarella stick right away because i was starving um and ayla was in the ayla was still in the transitional nursery so i would have to walk and it was like a maze i had to walk like through a whole maze to go get ayla and breastfeed her every two hours like or every hour and a half they were calling me they would call me they'll text me like hey it's time for you to come feed ayla how long does it take for my milk to officially come in how many days is like it like three to five days three to five yeah. will so, she be getting full you think off of like the little yeah because she doesn't need much it was just a really beautiful experience overall i'm super happy that i got to have my baby the only thing that happened that i was like a little bit annoyed about because i had an infection um i couldn't take my placenta and i told them that as soon as i got there like i'm taking my placenta put it in here and they were just basically saying that i couldn't take it because i they had to send it to the path lab and i thought they were like you know usually when that happens you can't take it and they they wouldn't accept it anyways the people you're doing it with and then i ended up finding out when i came home that you know the lady hit me up like hey whatever what happened whatever and i was like girl they didn't let me take it because they were saying that um because of the path lab needing it the path lab needing it that you wouldn't have taken it anyways and she was like girl the only way i don't take it is if you have hiv aids or something like that and i was like wow because the way she cleans it and sterilizes it whatever like just it was it was very possible and they kind of like tricked me into not taking it and i'm a little bit sad because i really was looking forward to taking my placenta um and pills but next time um 
but that was the only downfall that I didn't get to take my placenta. to the hospital food was amazing mm. the view was amazing Everything was just amazing. Um, even like the shower and everything was very, very pretty. Um, it was it was pretty dope. So that is my labor and my labor and delivery story with Ayla Dreamy. And then we went to go pick up Aubrey that same night, and she met Ayla, and <laughs> she freaked out i had originally recorded it because i was gonna show it and like you know show you guys but i am learning that there are not that there are certain things that i do not have to post i love sharing my life with you guys and sharing everything with you guys and just showing you guys everything but i think that there's certain things i don't have to show you guys for the sake of my kids privacy like them growing up like i like to put myself out there but that doesn't necessarily mean that like d likes to put certain things out there or like aubrey likes to put certain things out there or like you know when she gets older so like i just felt like that was a moment for us and she reacted like you know very emotionally she was adjusting to having somebody new in the house and having to share you know and but she kind of was just like who is that why does she look like a boy and why is daddy holding her like why is daddy holding her and i'm like what do you mean because she's a baby and then you know she started crying she asked me to carry her and take her to her room so i carried her and she just was like i just want to stay in my room and watch a movie so i stood with her for a little bit until she fell asleep and she kind of was like not trying to come inside my room for like the first week and a half and then you know now she loves ayla she thinks that that's her personal rag doll and she thinks she's her mom she told me today you're not her mom i'm her mom so i'm happy that she like got over that but point is i didn't share that video because it was just very personal very intimate and i just feel like that's something for aubrey to share one day if she wants to um but yeah that's how that went and sorry for the super long video these videos are pretty long anyways um yeah thank you for watching make sure you like comment share and of course subscribe thank you so much for watching my video thank you so much for being patient um for those who have been waiting for my labor and delivery vlog i love you guys i appreciate your love and support and i will see you guys next time again don't forget to subscribe and show your girl love i'm gonna put my instagram and everything down below um I did it. I got my feedback. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing you don't want to do unless, you know, the science literally tells you you can't do it. But you go ahead and you put your heart, you put your mind and your heart to do anything and everything that you want to do, even if it's a feedback. Period. Bye, guys.